men who were ruined after dating the girl. <laughs> Chill, chill, chat, chill. Let's analyze this video real quick. Let's analyze this video. After this, we could go into a game with some confessions. Six has built a multi-billion dollar empire by keeping the Kardashian-Jenner name in the media. But the one tactic that works best is high-profile relationships. Since people can- Actually pretty very true. Can't help but be overly invested in celebrity couples. Kardashian relationships are often short-lived, and they tend to be a bit one-sided. There have been countless men whose careers or personal lives suffer due to their association with the family. This is known as the Kardashian curse. Today we are going to look at the stories of men whose lives may have changed for the worse because of their relationship with a Kardashian. Starting with Ray J. <laughs> Ray J was a teenage R&B sensation. In 1997, when he was just 16 years old, his single, Let It Go, peaked at number 25 on the US Billboard Hot 100 after it appeared on the Yo, Set It Off. He continued this momentum in 2001 with his second single, Wait a Minute, featuring rapper I Ray J so heavy, but you know what make me so mad? I'm sorry, chat. I'm not even mad, though. Yo, when the at me in Raycons and say, I love your headset, yo, I need a Raycon sponsor, bro. Kim, which peaked at number 30 on the Billboard Hot 100 and helped establish Ray J as a mainstream R&B artist. He also ventured into acting, earning roles in popular sitcoms like Moesha and The Sinbad Girl, Show. He had every quality to be Moesha. a multifaceted superstar in Hollywood. Hey. Then he met Kim on, Kardashian. Boy, boy, During a brief <laughs> musical hiatus, Ray J began dating Kim in 2003 after meeting her while she was working as a stylist for his sister, Brandy. The couple dated for three years during which they made an explicit tape that would later catapult Kim into the spotlight. However, at this time, Kim was just another Dead valley numbers. girl whose only claim to fame is being the daughter Dead. of the lawyer who represented O.J. Simpson. So the public was generally unaware of their relationship. They separated sometime in 2006, and Ray J continued seeing the success of his recently really released third like studio Ray's album Ray's titled Radiation, featuring his most iconic single, One Wish. But it was after their breakup where things got bad for Ray J and great for Kim. But first, a word from our sponsor, Aura. Have you ever Googled your name and seen yourself on one of those strange sites that has without request will alert private information first debuted the at the same time your two-week free trial? Link in the description. Thanks, Aura. Kim began working as a stylist for her childhood friend, Paris Hilton, frequently accompanying Hilton to events and parties. Paris had a tape leak in 2004, three years earlier, conveniently at the same time her reality TV show, The Simple Life, first debuted. The tape and show combined launched Paris into fame. It just so happens that the Kardashian family had a reality TV show on the brink of releasing in 2007. Conveniently, in February of that year, the explicit tape of Ray J and Kim made in 2003 titled Kim Kardashian Superstar leaked onto the internet and garnered significant public interest and media attention. Kim filed a lawsuit against Vivid Entertainment for distributing the film, but this was all a part of the plan. Kim and her mother took Paris Hilton's strategy, and it worked flawlessly. Kim addressed the tape on The Tyra Banks Show and insisted that she didn't want it out there. However, she dropped the lawsuit just three months earlier and settled for $5 million, giving Vivid permission to market and sell copies of the tape. Sales from the film reportedly generated nearly $1.5 million in revenue in the first six weeks. The con- Yo! Controversy surrounding this tape was used to market season one of Keeping Up with the Kardashians. Episode one included a large segment about her tape and Kim's feelings about the leak. It was talked about heavily throughout season one, and this show launched Kim into becoming a household name in Hollywood. But nobody knew this was calculated at the time. It's not smart, Chad. That's the devil. And Ray J looked like the bad guy for filming this material. But temporarily, it did help his career. His 2008 album All I Feel debuted at number seven on the Billboard Hot 200, and he had his high highest charting single ever with Sexy Can I peaking at number three. He then tried to compete with Kim in the reality TV world with his dating show For the Love of Ray J, which lasted two seasons and averaged over two million viewers. That, but that was his final peak. His next reality show was canceled after two seasons and his music career dwindled. After not hearing a Ray J song for three years, we got blindsided by the controversial track I Hit It First featuring Bobby Brackens in April 2013. This song was very obviously about Kim, especially looking at the music video. The song peaked at number 51 on the Billboard Hot 100 and gave Ray J his first Hot 100 entry in years. Then Ray J reportedly sent Kim and Kanye a check that totaled his profits off the 
mixtape as a wedding gift, further taunting them. Although on the surface this seemed like a W for Ray J, it really just made him look jealous and desperate to get back into the spotlight. Aside from appearing on various reality shows over the years, Ray J's legacy is mostly known today not as an early 2000s R&B star, but rather the guy who made a tape with Kim Kardashian. Yeah, Ray sucks. J was just a pawn to get Kim introduced to Hollywood, and he fell right into the trap. However, Reggie Bush would become the blueprint of how the Kardashians use relationships to line their pockets. Reggie Bush was the most dominant college football player in the country during his time at the University of Southern California. He played a key role in helping USC win back-to-back -back national championships in 2003 so and 2004. In 2005, Bush won the prestigious Heisman Trophy, awarded to the most outstanding player in college football. Posting a Reggie Bush highlight video was a cheat code for a million views on YouTube in 2006. He was basically the first athlete to become a social media celebrity before he got to the big stage. Well, Just a few days before entering the NFL, <laughs> he signed a $1 million per year endorsement deal with Adidas, then more endorsements with Pepsi, Pizza Hut, General Motors, and Subway. The New Orleans Saints drafted Reggie with the second Three, overall pick the in the 2006 it. NFL Draft. Reebok had received over 15,000 orders for Bush's Saints Damn. jersey just one week after the draft. Reggie's popularity and social media presence made him the perfect candidate to be Kim Kardashian's boyfriend. During that offseason, Reggie attended the 2007 ESPY Awards where he was introduced to Kim through a mutual friend. At the time, Kim was still dealing with the aftermath of her tape with Ray J and was gradually elevating to superstar celebrity status. They began dating shortly after, and their relationship was on full display and keeping up during season 2. In episode 9, Kim shoots a sexy calendar for Reggie, claiming it's for his eyes only, even though there are TV cameras recording the entire shoot for millions of fans at home. But then her mother Chris distributes the calendars for public sale. Obviously, this situation was scripted for TV. This was never going to be exclusive to Reggie, and they knew the calendar would be sold to the public. They just needed to fill out 30 minutes of television and twist the narrative. Men dating the Kardashians have to understand that nothing about their life is private, and their girlfriends will twist their real lives to fit the format of reality television. Reggie was a humble and quiet guy. This one paparazzi interaction alone, you could see how much Kim loved the spotlight, and Reggie didn't. I cut the light off, remember? Reggie, what's up? Peace sign, <laughs> This type of attention every time you try to go out to a restaurant will wear down ass. on someone. Reggie's brother <laughs> chimed in on their relationship ass. many years later. Do you ever oh. wish that you were Kim Kardashian's brother-in-law. <laughs> never, never, never. I never really liked her. So. You didn't? No, not at all. Why not? No, she was, she was too much. She was, too she was too much for the family. We couldn't, how how so? Just too, just too much. Despite this, it seemed like the couple were destined to settle down together. The anticipation of the wedding made for great TV. Kim and Reggie just seemed so in love. But one day, everything changed. Due to the demands of Reggie's football commitments and Kim's continued exponential success, the couple broke up for the first time in 2009, citing their desire to focus on their respective careers. Season 3 of Keeping Up documented their fallout and how Kim was dealing with the breakup. You look like a slob, to put it mildly. And this place is oh, what? I deserve to be a slob. Yeah. This is how people live when they're like really depressed. So maybe I'm really depressed. Season 4 showcased Kim wanting to get back together with him, which they did briefly get back together in 2010 before calling it quits again. The entire rise and fall of their relationship was made for TV, but never showed Reggie's side of the situation, which is crucial to protect the Kardashians' image, cut out all the things that maybe make them look bad. In fact, they often try to make the men look like the weak ones. For example, a press release after their breakup said, Kim is going to be fine either way. She travels the world and has created brands. He just can't keep up. Damn. Which is true. Reggie could not keep up with all of the failed brands that Kim was creating. The Kardashian card, a prepaid debit card that was taken off the market within a month due to a firestorm of criticism. The card had extremely high fees and was marketed to teenagers <laughs> who are less educated on personal finance. Then there was Kardashian Color, a nail polish line with 14 different colors with goofy names like Chloe Had a Little Lamb and Court Is Ready for a Petty. Can't forget Quick Trim, the dieting supplement that promised you to reach your weight loss goals. Well, it was bogus and they got hit with a $5 million lawsuit. Then there was Kim's Skechers Shape Up Sneak in which advertisements claimed that the shoes would help people lose weight and strengthen and tone their butt, legs, and abdominal muscles. Because of the deceptive ads, Skechers had to pay a $40 million settlement after 
after losing a class action lawsuit. Now, Reggie said himself that he failed to live up to expectations on the football field during their relationship. Critics said he was overhyped in college, and his Kardashian That's fame sweet. made him even Thank more overhyped, which could be true, but he had a solid <laughs> career. He became a Super Bowl champion with the New Orleans Saints in 2010, and then went on to play some of his best football in the three years after the breakup with Kim. Reggie was inducted into the Saints Hall of Fame in 2019. While Kim's brands and relationships were failing, the reality show writers needed storylines for season four of Keeping Up. Luckily, Khloe Kardashian and Lamar Odom became oh, official shit. extremely fast, which ended in him almost losing his life. Lamar Odom decided to skip college and head straight into the 1999 NBA draft, where he was selected as the fourth overall pick by the Los Angeles Clippers. Standing at 6'10", Odom's ball handling ability, passing skills, and court vision were remarkable for a player of his size. He was highly regarded as a teammate and valued for his unselfish play and willingness to sacrifice for the team's success. This unselfishness and consistent production landed him on the Los Angeles Lakers, where he played alongside Kobe Bryant and Pau Gasol helping the franchise cool. win a championship in the 08-09 season. During that offseason, Lamar met Khloe Kardashian at a party for a fellow NBA player, Ron Artest, in August of 2000. Damn, that shit was on his mouth. Nine. With her, I was like, if I do what I normally do, I'm gonna lose her. And if I lose her, I think it's going to hurt a lot. Right then and there, I knew. We were together every day. It only took three weeks before the couple took their next step in their relationship and got engaged. It may seem like it's a quickie wedding to everyone else, but Chloe knows what she wants. The proposal was recorded and aired on an episode of Keeping Up with the Kardashians, where Lamar began regularly appearing. Just nine days after getting engaged, Lamar and Chloe tied the knot in September 2009. After the couple was officially married, they signed a deal to co-star on a new reality show, Chloe and Lamar, which would focus on their life together and the first year of their marriage. This relationship was great for business. Like many initially involved with the Kardashians, Lamar played great during the 2009-2010 NBA season, helping the Lakers secure back-to-back championships. His excellence on the court continued into the next season, and he was awarded the NBA Sixth Man of the Year. Mm -hmm. The couple's reality show, Chloe and Lamar, debuted on E! in 2011, which averaged about the same viewers as Keeping Up. During this time, Lamar and Chloe were one of Hollywood's more prominent power couples. Chloe may have even taken a bit of spotlight away from Kim. Fans were just obsessed with her and Lamar. Together, they'd create a His Her fragrance line, Unbreakable Love by Chloe and Lamar, along with various brand deals and sponsorships. Sadly, it was all about to come crashing down. Lamar's reputation as a reliable role player in the NBA was dwindling. From 2011 to 2013, he was traded twice. The initial trade from Los Angeles to Dallas is where Odom felt his career was over. That trade from the Lakers basically ended my career and purpose. I was never really myself ever again. Being in LA, the structure, the people I knew, it hurt leaving. I had great memories with the Lakers, with Kobe and Powell. That was a special time in my life. Now labeled a journeyman, Odom was experiencing career low statistics on the court, and his personal life was even worse. Around mid-2013, cheating rumors consumed media headlines. While Chloe initially supported her husband, Yo, she filed for divorce in late 2013 really, after months of speculation about yourself? Lamar's substance abuse issues. Lamar details one dark night in his book. While on a bender of cocaine and ecstasy, he grabbed Chloe forcefully in a fit of rage and said, I screamed, out of my mind. You trying to embarrass me in front of my friends? I'll effing kill you. You don't know what I'm capable of. Lamar was a violent addict. He also said his biggest Thank you. I couldn't keep my d in my pants or the out of my nose. These substance abuse issues led to a DUI and a stint in rehab. Their toxic relationship was constantly making headlines. It was a reoccurring segment of many Keeping Up with the Kardashians episodes. But Lamar didn't want to get divorced. He avoided ending his marriage for nearly two years before finally signing the papers. This all reached a tipping point one night where Lamar nearly lost his life. In October 2015, Lamar sought the company of two women working at a Nevada brothel, planning a four-day stay where he spent $75,000. At Love Ranch, Odom would have a near-fatal overdose. He became comatose and was placed on life support in a hospital in Las Vegas, where he suffered 12 strokes and endured six heart attacks as his heart stopped twice, and doctors told friends and family to prepare for the worst. Fortunately, he regained consciousness and was transferred to Los Angeles to begin his recovery journey. In the aftermath of the incident, Chloe withdrew her request for a divorce. She stayed- So wait, no disrespect and nothing like, but I ain't know he paid, he- he, uh, thank you for the sub. This nigga paid to be tied to the bed for like. 
Six heart attacks. Like he, he said, a, they said a love wrench. What is a love wrench? <laughs> 75,000, excuse me. Stated ...that she had not reconciled with Odom, but wished to assist him in making okay, medical okay. decisions during his recovery. Come early 2016, Lamar was making strides in his recovery while Chloe provided oh. emotional and financial support, remaining by his hospital bed day and night. Once Chloe felt as though Odom was back on his feet, the divorce was finalized in December of that year. Through it all, it does seem like Chloe rich. genuinely cared for Lamar. He was clearly not ready for this level of fame, and they obviously rushed into a relationship to capitalize on the money and ratings it would generate. Turns out, his dean demons got the best of him, but he wasn't the only basketball player to fall victim to the Kardashian curse. Kendall Jenner has dated at least seven different NBA players. Holy shit! Seven?! Prompting a famous meme in the NBA community, Kendall's starting five. Yo, we gotta start, we gotta start talking about how these can't keep a nip. <laughs> now, a lot of NBA fans like to indulge in the idea we that Kendall- always talking about how the nigga can't keep the body. Can't keep the nigga ruin these players' performance, but it's an extremely weak argument because many of these situations can be attributed like this fumble Jordan Clark. <laughs> I'm just saying, that's to literally so gay. Just normal True. ups and downs in a ball player's career. Jordan Clarkson dated Kendall in 2016 and had a slight dip in performance the next couple seasons, but bounced back and has been playing better than ever for the past three years. <laughs> the same can be said for Kyle Kuzma, who dated Kendall in late 2018 to mid 2019, had a slight dip in performance the next two seasons, but again bounced back immensely for the past two years. <laughs> ben Simmons briefly dated Kendall in 2018, but didn't see a major decline in his performance until 2022, four years later. Later. Devin Booker played great the entire time he was dating Kendall. Phoenix Suns fans just like to blame her because they got outplayed by the Bucks in the 2021 NBA Finals. Blake Griffin is probably the one who had the worst downfall after dating Kendall. In summer of 2017, Blake separated from the mother of his children, Bryn Cameron, thinking he was going to get serious with the 22-year-old model. During their time together, Kendall was frequently spotted courtside while Blake was playing for the LA Clippers. In September 2017, a source told People that the relationship was nothing serious. Blake is doing everything in his power to make Kendall his girlfriend, but she's keeping him at an arm's length because she knows how busy she is. Which makes you wonder what type of mixed signals were happening that Blake would leave his family for a fling with a model. Was he being let on, or was he just that irresponsible? Unfortunately, when Blake was traded from the LA Clippers to the Detroit Pistons in January of 2018, the cross-country move essentially ended all hopes for a long-term relationship with Kendall. Now, his career declined from there mostly because of injuries. It's really his personal life that suffered after that. He built a reputation for being somewhat of a joke based on how he chased Kendall, who never really wanted him. Many have even speculated that Blake is the father of the adult star- or Lena Rhodes' first child. Also, don't have- All right, man. All right. I don't know if this is rigged <laughs> for views, but that little nigga do look like- It's with NBA players. That's another one. <laughs> <laughs> This rumor has led to Griffin becoming a meme within the NBA community. Blake was a superstar player at one point for sure, but his downfall seems more so because of his injuries rather than being tainted by the chaotic lifestyle of the Kardashians. Seeing how successful Chloe and Lamar initially were- Chloe looked like fucking Shrek, bro. I'm sorry. Where inspired Kim to get a basketball husband for herself, Chris Humphreys, which ended in Chris suing Kim for using him for publicity. Entering the NBA in 2004 as the 14th- Ironic, oh, I don't give a shit, I don't give a shit overall pick selected by the Utah Jazz, Chris Humphreys was highly regarded as a promising basketball prospect. However, Yo, he was just okay. Humphreys, he averaged 4.3 hey, points hold on, hold on, and 3 rebounds on, per game in his first 5 hey. seasons, but he also only averaged 11 and a half minutes of playtime. Chris was a decent player, but nowhere near the superstar that the Kardashians aimed for. However, in 2009, Chris began playing for the New Jersey Nets. His playtime doubled, Yo, look at this nigga's bill. and so did his stats. Not too long after, he met Kim Kardashian through a this nigga was friend. supposed to be Kim a was photographed sitting talent. courtside on multiple occasions at the Barclays Center that fall, and though it was obvious the two were dating, they initially kept the status of their relationship a secret. But things escalated much quicker than we could have ever imagined. Seven months after meeting, Chris proposed to Kim at her home, placing rose petals on the floor that spelled out, Will you marry me? Kim said yes, and season six had a whole new plot. The massive and glamorous wedding cost a whopping $10 million. The ceremony was filmed for the four-hour E! special, Kim's Fairy Tale Wedding, which aired on television two months later. The couple quickly capitalized off the attention, appearing on The Ellen Show, where they renewed their vows. It's been five weeks since you- God, I'm not getting married in this pilgrim-ass hat. 10 million? Wedding, which is a long time for reality TV stars, so it's time to renew your vows. 
Unfortunately, Ellen's one-off comment foreshadowed their early demise, because Kim filed for divorce after just 72 days of marriage. For better, for worse, for richer, for poorer, in sickness but and I in health it was until life. death do us part. Those are pretty serious promises, let alone a $10 million wedding. Kim said, I hope this marriage was forever, but sometimes things don't work out as planned, which makes you wonder what the plan was. While Kim seemed content with parting ways, Chris revealed his own statement that he was not done fighting for the relationship. I love my wife and I'm devastated to learn she filed for divorce. Kardashian fans immediately took Pablo Kim's Blake, side. They said Chris was you. always rude to her and they could tell through the highly edited- They talk about some that's you, like you, just put, you just put the letter U. Did and scripted Weird TV show fun. that it obviously wasn't going to work out. For example, I'm just saying I want to raise my kids and live in LA. That's where I'm from. That's all I know. And by the time you have kids and they're in school and all that, like, and no one will probably care about you, let's be honest. Obviously, this is a very rude and mean thing to say to your girlfriend. However, we don't know how much of this conversation was edited. What if right before this, Kim said, well, you're never going to be a Hall of Famer, so you should just quit. They also point to another clip during the wedding rehearsal. When you are surrounded by a family that directs your every move, directs the words that come out of your mouth, controls every situation to make it benefit them the most, something as small as refusing to shave your mustache feels like a victory. On top of that, media outlets are posting headlines that say, Chris Humphreys mocks Kim Kardashian's weight on show. This is what he said. No! No! Get in a lot of wedding cake! I'm pretty sure everyone in history who's tried to lift up another human grunts and says how heavy they are. In response to this divorce, Chris filed to annul the marriage, citing that it was fraud. An annulment is a legal ruling that erases a marriage by declaring the marriage null and void and that the union was never legally valid. Kind of confusing, but basically Chris was arguing that this marriage was all a spectacle for entertainment, where he was fully dedicated and serious the entire time. Oh my god, I forgot about Bruce. Never go through something and do something that wasn't real, or I didn't believe in. So I can really only speak for myself in terms of that. The pair reached a settlement in court in April 2013 after Humphreys dropped his annulment request, and their divorce was finalized shortly after that. In 2017, Kim reflected on her reasons for marrying Humphreys, <laughs> saying silly. at the time, I just uh, thought, silly, oh, Billy. I'm 30 years old, I better get this together. I better get married. But I knew on my honeymoon it wasn't going to work out. Chris expressed that he Damn. was in a dark place for a year after the split because he felt like the world hated him. I didn't even want to say anything to defend myself because Boy, it felt like I couldn't win. Bro, fuck the world. Though he wasn't really much of a star player before he married Kim, afterwards he started playing some of his best basketball. However, hey. this failed marriage and the public siding with Kim shattered his reputation and overshadowed any of his career highlights, especially considering he was replaced with Kim's new superstar oh, boyfriend, man, so Kanye ass. West. Kanye and Kim's fallout is easily the biggest and most catastrophic of them all. Their relationship alone could be its own video. Well, yeah, Trap Laura Ross did it in three and a half hours. However, Kanye is trying to save his children from being used as pawns to become the successors of the Kardashian empire. Kris Jenner molded this formula of managing her kids' careers and capitalizing from their success. Ye doesn't want that to be done to his kids, because it has already begun. In November 2021, Kim Kardashian launched a joint TikTok account with her eldest daughter, Northwest. Kim and North accumulated more than 130,000 followers in less than 24 hours. People are now becoming fans of the nine-year-old. They claim she is exactly like Kanye, confident and unashamed of her attitude. Now TikTok clearly states that the minimum age for a user is 13 years old, but they don't use age verifications when you sign up, plus Kim making this a joint account makes it seem like North has restricted access to it. We know this isn't true when North went live on TikTok by herself on her own personal phone. She ran into Kim's room where she said, Mom, I'm live! <laughs> Okay, bye. After multiple other instances of North posting on TikTok, Kanye told Kim he didn't want her on the app, but she wouldn't listen, so he went public. Hey everybody, I just got off the phone with Kim. I told her to stop antagonizing me with this TikTok thing. I said, it's never again. I am her father. I know y'all don't respect fathers and the idea of family and media tries to promote something. I said, I am not allowing my hey, daughter. Hey, man. Yo, but you know what's crazy? When this shit came out, bro, niggas is laughing at it and shit. To be used by TikTok, to be used by Disney. All of us have been on TikTok. It's completely understandable why a father does not want his child to use that app. 
but it's the frustration that Kanye omits and his very serious tone that makes people label him crazy and controlling. Kim disagrees and says Kanye is attacking her. Kanye's constant need for attacking me in interviews and on social media is actually more hurtful than any TikTok North might create. As the parent who is the main provider and caregiver for our children, I am doing my best to protect our daughter while also allowing her to express creativity in the medium that she wishes with it. Y'all letting y'all y'all letting y'all kid have a TikTok at 13? Fuck the fuck no. My blazing child will not be having no phone until the age of 15, nigga. Fuck out of here. He will know three different languages, four, before that nigga can even make his Instagram account adult supervision or her vision because it brings her happiness however just one year later and everyone agrees that kanye was right northwest linked up with ice spice and shared a video of themselves and some friends singing along to boys a liar part two north had previously posted a portrait she drew of ice spice weeks prior kim likely arranged their encounter so that the daughter could meet someone she looked up to having done something similar in the past with jojo siwa the video didn't initially spark much controversy as many felt the encounter was fairly innocent and playful however days later, things went too far after North posted a TikTok cosplayed as Ice Spice, wearing an outfit many deemed inappropriate for someone her age. Amid immense backlash, many questioned Kim's parenting, ultimately forcing her to delete the video. Kim said, as soon as I saw the words, meaning the lyrics North was singing, I was like, oh no, we're taking this down. Which proves that one, Kim does let her 10-year-old use TikTok without supervision, and begs the question, why was she letting her daughter hang out with the 23-year-old rapper anyways? Well, because one month later, Skims, her company launched a campaign surrounding Ice Spice, and this was the perfect controversy to help sell some clothes. Kim also agreed recently that Kanye was right the whole time. You know, and then I saw on the internet, it's like, Kanye was right, you know, he, and, and maybe he was, you know, in that instance. Maybe if we put my family on display, or yours, or anyone's in front of millions, it would be just as messed up as theirs. Life is extremely complicated. To blame these men's downfall or depreciation on a single relationship seems drastic. Not to mention these relationships and family complications are edited, manipulated, and sensationalized for our entertainment. I'm not sure if the Kardashian curse is real. It definitely is extreme to say that these men's lives were destroyed after dating them. But one thing we can guarantee <laughs> is that the Kardashians always Kanye benefit. So they will funny, always bro. come out on top. <sighs> what the fuck? It's cool ass nigga. What the fuck? Yo, this nigga got a scowl, huh? Damn. Videos like that kind of fuck with my mind a little bit. 